immunoserology, visualized lab experiments. Experiment number 1A, slide agglutination. Principle involved in agglutination is that it is a combination of a particulate antigen plus its corresponding specific antibody, which results in the formation of the visible aggregation of particles. Individuals form antibodies against antigens they do not possess. Agglutination is the clumping together in a suspension of antigen-bearing cells, microorganisms, or particles in the presence of specific antibodies. Agglutination happens or occurs in two stages. First is sensitization. It is the attachment of a specific antibody to its specific antigen. Hence, the first stage is the initial binding. The second stage is known as a lattice formation. It is the formation of stable, large aggregates or the formation of crosslinks. When red cells are mixed with various reagent antisera, wherein we can find the soluble antibodies, agglutination will occur on the slides containing cells possessing the corresponding antigen. The use of RBCs as the indicator system results in agglutination if the antigen to the corresponding antibody is present on the red cells. The materials for this experiment include the following, anti-A and B anti-sera, four blood samples from different patients in EDTA, glass slides, applicator sticks, and pipettes. And for the procedure, let's start with adding the reagents first, our anti-A and anti-B anti-sera. On the section of the slide labeled anti-A, place one drop of antibody A anti-serum. You might wonder why I am having four glass slides here because we will be testing four blood samples. Next, this is followed by the addition of the anti-B reagent, which is colored yellow. So again, on the section of the slide labeled anti-B, place one drop of antibody B anti-serum. This is followed by the addition of the uh, blood samples. So in a separate area beside each drop of the reagent antibody, place one drop of red blood cells. Here we are using uh, blood preserved in EDTI. You can use uh, a dropper for adding the blood samples. Take note always beside the reagent, not directly on the reagents. And please uh, carefully mix each solution with a separate side of the applicator stick and refrain from making bubbles during the process. The first slide shows the absence of agglutination, so we are hoping that the second slide will show agglutination. So both uh, on the left and the right side, there is no agglutination, so we're hoping that this time we can have agglutination. Let's see. The second slide. Oh. I see agglutination coming. So that's agglutination. The presence of agglutination. So, what is the blood type of the patient then for the first glass slide and also for the second glass slide? Now we are on the third glass slide, third blood sample too. Again, as a reminder, anti-A reagent is colored blue while anti-B is colored yellow. Another agglutination is being formed. And for the last one, if we can observe agglutination in both antibody and RBC mixture, then we can say that this or the blood type of the patient who owns this blood sample 
is a b a good situation uh, doesn't really uh, happen or occur in a very similar manner like take this one as an example so uh, tilt slowly back and forth for two minutes make sure that with each uh, tilt the antibody rbc mixture falls complete to the end of the slide before tilting in the opposite direction yay that's a b agglutination in both anti a and anti b so record results as positive if agglutination occurred or negative if there was no agglutination or there was an absence of agglutination see we have the complete blood types here we have uh, ab agglutination in both b of course only in anti b we have a agglutination happens only with the anti a reagent and for o there is this complete absence of agglutination in both anti-A and anti-B, anti-serum.